So if you are at all passionate about server administration or uh, DevOps or making deployments, uh, or if you're wanting to get into that world, uh, Vagrant, and you don't know what Vagrant is, Vagrant is awesome. It is a tremendous tool for learning all that stuff. Uh, basically what it does is it allows us to, on demand, spin up virtual Linux boxes. You can spin up four of them on your machine and run a, a, you know, run a load balancer and test failover stuff, or you could spin up a virtual Vagrant box and configure it and try to do deployments to that virtual machine. It's a great playground for learning stuff, and it's very useful for a lot of other things. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into how to use Vagrant to spin up a virtual Linux machine. And later on, once I'm done, I'll kind of tell you some more philosophy on why you should use it for a local development environment instead of WAMP or MAMP or stuff like that and how devs are using it. But for now, let's get into the fun stuff and let's actually use it. You're going to want to go to VagrantUp.com and you're going to want to download it. You're also going to want to go to, if you don't have VirtualBox installed yet, VirtualBox.org and download it and install it. And all of this will, by the way, be in a gist that I will put in the description so I don't leave you hanging. Um, and so those are both installed. I should be able to go Vagrant-V and you should be running 1.5 or newer uh, for what we're going to be doing today. So then all you have to do is go to VagrantCloud.com uh, and we are going to pick some boxes that we want to install on our system. So go to VagrantCloud.com and go to Popular. And the most popular ones are the Precise 32 Ubuntu box and the Precise 64. Uh, 64 is more powerful, but it's going to consume more RAM on your computer. Uh, this Precise 32-bit takes about 300 megabits of RAM, megabytes of RAM to run. And this takes more like five or 600. So I usually run the 32s unless I have a reason to run the 64-bit system because I can run a whole lot more of these. Especially if you only have like four gigabytes of RAM or so, you're going to want to run a 32-bit. Uh, so what you're going to do is Vagrant Box Add and then that. And that will download that box image. It won't install anything on your system yet. It's just going to put that box on your machine. So we can now spin up. You notice I've downloaded it before. It'll take you a few minutes to download it if you have not. Um, but now I can spin up as many precise 32 boxes as I want, as long as my computer can handle it. Uh, so now you're just going to go to, you know, install as many boxes as you want. And now you go to the folder that you want to be running uh, to actually create your virtual box in. And you're going to go Vagrant init. And once again, that, um, let me see if I can do, no, I can't tab and have it autocorrect. Uh, HashiCorp Precise 32. There we go. So I'm going to now init that. Um, and now I can go Vagrant up. And so now I'm going to spin up my Precise32 box. It's going to import the image. It's going to start booting up my Linux box. And it's also going to add a Vagrant user and create SSH privileges for that user so I don't need a password. Um, there we go. Now I'm running a Linux box on my machine. So I can now go Vagrant SSH. And it's going to SSH in as my Vagrant user. So there we go. I'm now on the Precise32 box. As far as my computer is concerned, this is a server out on the internet, and I am SSHing into it. So I can go sudo apt git install git. I'm going to start installing GitHub on my new machine. Um, that'll take a little while, probably a minute or two. So I'll cancel and pretend that was successful. Um, so there we go. I'm going to exit out now. And let's go ahead and make this a even more realistic. Let's give it an IP address and a domain name uh, so we can actually run it as a web server and as a fake uh, domain name so we don't even need to purchase hosting. Uh, let's go ahead. If I ls, I exit it out of that box, and I'm back on my machine. Um, and so what you can do now is let's go ahead and open that Vagrant file in Sublime Text. I'm going to change syntax to Ruby so it looks pretty. Okay, so it created a Vagrant configuration file for me, and the only line in it is this. All the other ones are just kind of some boilerplate stuff for me. And the only thing I'm going to add is I'm going to uncomment this private networking, and I'm going to give it an IP address. 55.55.55. You can make it pretty much whatever you want. Um, and so my IP address is going to be running that. I'm going to save and quit. And now I'm going to run Vagrant reload. 
So now it's going to uh, reload my box with my new configuration. It's going to shut my box down, reboot it, and now I'm going to be running. You'll see that it is now making a connection to something. It doesn't spin forever. It makes a connection to something, but it stops right away. So it doesn't really know. Uh, there's, there's no Apache or there's no web server running on my Linux box. Uh, so the connection goes through, but I don't get an HTML file or anything. So let's go ahead and install Nginx. Let's go... I'm going to Vagrant SSH, so I'm going back into my box. If you're not familiar with Nginx, Nginx is like a substitution for Apache. Uh, usually it's what you use when you're running a Node.js application in production. We'll get into that in probably the next video. Um, so let's go sudo apt get. Let's update our apt get application real quick. That's always a good idea whenever you spin up a box. The first thing you should do is run apt-get update. Um, apt-get install nginx. So let's go ahead and install the nginx web server. It's very light, takes almost no time. That's done and now all we have to do is go service. Uh, we do sudo service nginx start. There we go, it started and now if I run there we go, welcome to Nginx is my default. So now I am running a web server on 55.55.55.5. Now the only thing I wanna do is I wanna actually make this map to a domain name. So let's go ahead and go. We're going to go sudo open etc slash hosts. Uh, and we're going to do this in, I'll do it in sublime text. So here we are. If you've never messed with a hosts file before, uh, it's it's very basic. There's basically just two rules. Don't change anything that's in here already. Um, the other rule is any IP address you type in, you can assign a domain name to it. So now when anything on my machine goes to myawesomesite.com, it's going to send it to this IP address instead of whatever IP address it would normally send myawesomesite.com to. I'm going to save it. It may ask for your password. Um, so now I should be able to go to myawesomesite.com and there you go. It's going to my new server. Welcome to Nginx. So what we've just done is we have spun up a Linux server. You can now configure it however you want to. Um, and you can then make sure that myawesomesite.com goes to your server instead of whatever IP address you'd normally go to. Um, and so what lots of times people will do is they'll actually do this is they'll go dev.myawesomesite.com, ask for my password, and so then you'll go to dev.myawesomesite.com for your local machine, and then you'll go to myawesomesite.com for your production machine. So I want to talk real quick about why you would do this. Two reasons. One, you want to play around with Linux machines and you want to be able to destroy them when you're done. Okay, so that's, that's a great reason right there. Um, uh, the other day I was running, I think I already mentioned, I was running, you know, tons of Linux machines behind a, a fake Linux machine running a load balancer. I was able to see what happens when memory started getting low on this machine and all these other things. You can totally run tests. You can set up a fake server and practice making command line deployments to that server without blowing up your production server. Um, so there's that. There's just practice. And then the other big, 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 big way that people are using Vagrant is they are running a Vagrant file in the repository for their project. Um, and so what this is going to do is whenever your project is open, you're going to be able to, instead of running MAMP, uh, which will install, install Apache, MySQL, and PHP on your Mac uh, or on your Windows machine, you can actually just run a Vagrant box that's configured exactly like your production web server. And then you can give it an IP address and a domain name like dev.myawesomewebsite.com. And so now you don't have to, your machine is not tied to one project. Because uh, lots of times what will happen is a dev will have a problem on their machine. Uh, but they're not seeing that problem on another dev's machine because they're running a different version of PHP or they're running a different version of Ruby or they're running a slightly different version of Mac OS X or something. And this way, the code you're writing is running on the exact same virtual box that all the other devs on your team are running their code on. Um, 
Uh, another nice thing is that uh, whenever Vagrant makes that SSH connection, you can actually access all the code from your repo right here from within the virtual machine. So the virtual machine is running and it's running the code from your GitHub repository that you're editing on the machine you're on now, if that makes any sense. It basically solves the problem of, well, that doesn't happen on my machine. Why does it happen on your machine? Which happens to developers all the time. So there's my spiel. There's my little soapbox presentation for you. I hope you have a ton of fun with Vagrant. In the next video, we're going to be getting into running. Um, we're going to run a Vagrant box, and we're going to install Nginx as a front end to our Node.js application. And then after that, we're going to set up a load balancer so Nginx can be running to multiple Node.js servers uh, and handling failovers and stuff like that. Hope you enjoyed the video.